So Skull and Bones was officially released yesterday and here are some tips and tricks I wish I knew day one. Also huge shout out to Ubisoft not only for providing me with the game but also giving me an extra code for the PS5 premium edition of Skull and Bones to share with you guys. And don't worry I'm not going to ask you to like the video or even be subscribed for that matter or hide it in the video. I'm just going to put it here on screen so the fastest watcher can get this. Um, good luck and hope you enjoy the copy. With that said let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. The first thing I wish I realized a lot earlier is that you can actually get on your boat from anywhere. You don't need to physically walk up to your boat to get back out into the seas. On PlayStation, for example, you can just hold down the circle button anywhere where you're walking around and it'll automatically teleport you to on your boat. This can save you a bunch of time, whether it's from settlements or you're back at the hub area accepting missions or buying some stuff for your ship. You can just hold down circle and go straight back out into the seas. On a similar note, you can actually fast travel directly from the map menu instead of actually having to go to your boat physically and then click on fast travel. As long as you're in any area where you can walk around, such as the outpost or the hub areas, you can just open up your map menu and then fast travel to any of the locations with the little arrows on it. There are a total of 35 locations that you can fast travel to in the game. I've gone ahead and put this map together for you guys, so you can screenshot this if you want. This is the location of all 35 of the fast travel locations in the game. It's always handy to have the fast travel locations unlocked, so if you ever go past one of these locations, make sure you disembark on them to unlock the massive fast travel point. Also, now we're talking about the map, you can actually see which items are in demand in each area, which means you're generally going to get a better price for selling those said items in that region at that time. So it's a great way to make some extra silver if you don't mind sailing around a little bit. There's actually a setting in this game that I'm really surprised isn't enabled by default. And that's if you go to the second to last tab called interface and then UI HUD, you should have an option called customize user interface. The third option down is called status effect icons and this starts disabled. You definitely want to turn this on. This way you can see the build up and what status effects you're actually causing on the enemy ships as well as your own. And considering a lot of the ship builds consist pretty heavily on actually causing specific status effects, I'm really surprised this starts disabled. When it comes to tracking the location of blueprints or even the materials themselves, you can actually just simply mark them. So if you're in the shop and say you want this specific blueprint and you don't yet have it, you can press the square button to mark this blueprint. This way, when you open up the map, you can see the exact location where you can either buy that blueprint from, or if you do already have the blueprint and you mark it off, it'll show you the location of the map of all the materials necessary to build that blueprint. This way, you don't need to waste a bunch of time looking up where to get each material for each one of the blueprints you're trying to build. Though if for a reason you do wish to track a specific material that's not related to any blueprint you currently need, you can always go into the codex over here and then go down to either raw materials, refined materials, specialized materials, whatever you need. And then you can simply just track them from here individually and they'll show up on the map where you can get these from. Now when you're sailing around and you stop at any outpost, make sure you are refilling your water, which you can normally do for free in pretty much any outpost, or even buy the barrels of water if you can afford it. If you use water when sailing around, it gives you a speed boost for a short amount of time, which is really great when you're trying to get away from enemies or catching up to enemies as well. So I'd recommend having the water in one of your quick select items down here for your D-pad, in this case on the PlayStation. Also, now we have mentioned the quick select item wheel down the bottom left, make sure you take into account how useful food is in this game. Honestly, you don't even need to waste time cooking the food, you can really just use the raw food and most of them give you like a 20% recharge in your stamina. So just by making sure you have a bunch of like bananas or coconuts, anything like that in your inventory, you can continuously keep on recharging your stamina as it drains down and this way you never have to slow down. So what I do personally in the item wheel is on the right hand side I always have equipped the raw food category not just an individual piece of food. This way if I run out of let's say bananas it'll automatically switch to coconut or any other raw foods I have. Every time you stop by back at the base or even any of the outposts for that matter make sure you're storing all of your stuff away in the warehouse as you do have a limited amount of items you can carry on your boat and there's nothing worse than being out and finishing an epic battle and then not being able to loot the enemy ship because you don't have enough space left. So make sure you get into a habit of every time you come back to the hub area, make sure you put everything away in the warehouse. And remember, you don't have to do this individually, selecting each item. You can actually press the square button and mark off as many items as you want and then transfer it all over at once. Honestly, I would say the real game begins once you hit Kingpin status. This is where you unlock the takeovers. This is going to be your main method of obtaining pieces of eight, which are the gold coins, the currency you're going to be using in late game. Once you hit Kingpin status, I would definitely recommend starting on your empire as soon as possible. This means taking over manufactories. As you can see, for each one of these manufactories you take over and own, they're going to be consistently producing pieces of eight, which is the gold currency. So the more of these you own, the quicker and more gold coins you're going to be getting passively in the background. You do unfortunately need to go to them manually and pick them up without fast traveling back, so it's not completely passive, but it is going to be your main method of farming pieces of eight late on in the game. The two methods for this are the PvP events, like we said, which are the hostile takeovers, which is pretty much just going to consist of whoever stays in the circle close to the manufacturers for the longest gets to keep the manufactory. 
The other method of obtaining mana factories are the PvE, the co-op events, which are also takeovers, but the way these work is that you and two other players are going to join up and try to sink an enemy ship. Once you sink it, you're going to get loot, which is going to randomly give to one of your players. I heard somewhere that it's going to be always given to the player that deals the most damage. I'm not sure how true that is. It doesn't really matter which other players gets the loot as all they have to do is take that loot back to the base while the other two players escort them to make sure they get there safely. If your squad does make it back there safely, you will get yourself a mana factory. So definitely try to get your mana factories up and running as soon as you can in the game. Anyway, those are all the tips I have for you guys today. If you do have any extra ones, please do leave them in the comments down below. I hope you did find this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up button, subscribe for more content coming very soon, and we'll see you next time.